أكبر الله الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمد رسول الله إخوة الإيمان قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم said to his cousin عبد الله بن عباس while he was youth وعلم basically the tradition is a lengthy hadith and inshallah for the sake of brevity we we'll cut it short to just focus on something that I would like to share with you today inshallah Juma khutbah <coughs> واعلم ان النصر مع الصبر والفرج مع الكرم وان مع العسر يسرا just at the, at the end of the hadith Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned this tremendous advice to Abdullah ibn Abbas radiyallahu ta'ala and my brothers and sisters when we speak about Abdullah ibn Abbas he was one of the protectors, one of the greatest protectors of these deen. And one of the greatest narrators of the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I know that victory comes with patience. No sabr, no nasr. Relief with affliction and ease with hardship. That was the advice of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to Abdullah ibn Abbas. Ikhwani, just a glimpse of history. In the battle of Al-Qadisiyya, the Amir of this battle was Sa'ad ibn Abi al-Waqqas radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. Was a big battle. Was a fierce war. And after fighting through the whole day, <coughs> Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas, the leader of the army, he said to the fighters, Sahara, be patient and keep fighting. See, the Amir al Mu'mineen is almost dark. It's almost night. We are tired and exhausted. But subhanAllah, enough is enough. The Mujahideen are indeed warriors, but subhanAllah, you have no ability to fight the whole day and night. وَلَكِنْ سَعْدِ بْنِ أَبِي الْوَقَاسِ يَقُولْ Be patient and keep fighting. Even into the night when most armies, most armies stop fighting at night. وَلَكِنْ سَعْدِ بْنِ أَبِي الْوَقَاسِ has got a different idea. Motivating the fighters to fight. Allahu Akbar. And subhanallah, ikhwari, what happened the next morning, the Muslims had won, had won. They crushed the mighty Persian Empire, crushed it. We learn from the seerah of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yasir and his family, I think most of you are quite well aware of this. Some instances of that history. At the beginning, when the Prophet ﷺ started to preach his Tawheed and convey his message to his community. Yes, he was a young man and his mother Sumaya was among the first people who embraced voluntarily. They embraced Islam, but they were subjected to the biggest persecution and torture. Allahu Akbar, something beyond human ability to afford and to bear. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, upon witnessing this, he used to pass by Ammar bin Yasir and his mom under a severe torture by the polytheists, by the mushrikeen. And he urged them. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam felt grief and sadness in his heart. But yet, urge the family of Yasir, be patient, be patient, you almost done it. 
Be patient. Your meeting place is there. Allah Akbar. That's the ultimate price, ya ikhwan. In what way Rasulullah is asking, is asking Yasir and his family to endure the calamity, the torture of al-mushrikeen. Inna mu'idakum al-jannah. Inna mu'idakum al-jannah. My brothers and sisters in Islam, they are on the menu of patience and perseverance and endurance, a host of incidences. And subhanallah, ya ikhwan, anything that you do, that's a brother, that's a sister, anything that you do in day-to-day -day life, there is this one moment, there is this one moment, okay? Everyone is tired. Everyone is fed up. Everyone has had enough. Everyone is exhausted. But if you push that very moment, if you push that moment, if you endure it with a little bit of patience, if you endure it a little bit more, Wallahi, you will make it. You make it. You make it to the shore of safety. You make it to the edge of success. Ask the winners. Winners mentalities. Ask the brave people. Ask the courageous. The people, the people in our this community and in any communities, even within, within your families. Courageous warriors, warriors in the battle of life. Ask them. They went through through stormy times. Hardships, calamities, and trials. Allahu Akbar. And they were faced with extreme challenges. Walakin, walakin, through patience and endurance, they managed to cope with it. They dealt with it. Allahu Akbar. And they secured a very good, satisfactory outcome. Outcome. Ikhwani, you push that moment. You will be successful. And after that, the rest, what you do? Cruise control. The rest, just cruise control. But you need to be a good player on that game. The game, and a good game, well, like, you know, is really is not a toy. It's something that is a genuine, it's a genuine game. When you are faced with a calamity, it could be within your family, it could be your money, it could be your wealth, it could be anything. And sometimes you bend down. Sometimes you bend down. And sometimes you lose your way. You lose your way of wudu. You lose your way of salah. Allahu Akbar. So Ikhwani, whatever you do, whatever you try to do, whether succeed at a project, starting a business, okay? A change in habit from a bad habit to a good habit. You are a smoker. You see something which is good. You glue to the TVs the whole day. You have a, a the habit of looking down upon people. You have many bad habits. It could be something you do in practice. It's something you do in actions and deeds. Something which is part of your life that you don't like. Be patient. Try to remove it. In the Nasra. A master victory against dunya, it's glamour and glitter. A patient victory against your own self that sticks to you. Victory against shaitan and his army. Victory against laziness. A victory against ignorance. A victory against showing off. These are vicious things here, Ikhwan. We need to get rid of them. And you have to be really a warrior. A combatant. I want to get rid of this. I don't want to be like that. I don't want to speak that language. I don't want to work on that job. I don't want to get married in that way. Okay? So you have to actually, whatever you do, conquer an enemy. Maintaining a healthy, stable marriage relationship. And the list goes on and on and on. Remember this, keep it fresh in your memory. Inna nasra ma'as sabri.
please, you learn this, you learn it, learn it, keep it there, always there in your mind. Whatever you do, that's my key. This is the key. That's my document. That's my friend. My friend is, I know, victory will always, always, this is Allah's universal law. Allah will never change his mind. Allah will never change his ways. This is how, this is how Allah deals with us. You are patient like Ibrahim. Look, you are patient like Noah, you are patient like Sulaiman and Moses. You are patient like Muhammad and Isa, these are senior prophets. They were really patient. Look at Musa, look at Isa, look at Noah, alayhi salam. We will, we will deliver, we will deliver victory for the patient people. Allahu Akbar. <coughs> and more importantly, Ikhwani, more importantly, remember something, that a sabr, a sabr is an active, I really want you to listen to this, really want you to listen to this. A sabr is an active quality, it's not a passive quality. So you can't sit back in your house, in your bed, and you are glued to the TV, and you expect things will go your way. Will go your way. It would have happened. You will stay the whole day in your bed, and you are glued to the TV, and you think that Allah Azza wa Jalla will rain heaven on you with gold and silver. You're killing me. It would never happen. You have to work. You have to work. So I do patience, I do suffer, but I work for it. I work for my things. I work for my ambitions. I work for my dreams. I work for my hopes. I work the thing I want to buy for my wife, for my kids, for my family, for myself. I, I need to work to save money for my holidays. I need to save money to, uh, to work, to contribute to my own masjid. I need to do this. I have to work for it. I have to strive for it. But listen to this. Listen to this. And nataj min Allah. The results are from Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. You do your bit, Allah Azza wa Jalla will do his bit. Wa ma bikum min ni'matin fa min Allah. I work hard. I, I stay at night. I do my best. And at the end of the day, I said, Allah, please look after me. I've done what I could do. Wa ma bikum min ni'matin fa min Allah. Whatever blessings you have, it is purely from Allah. If you deny, if you deny, then Allah's punishment is so severe. Wala in kafartum in adabi. La shadid. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Wasta'inu bis sabri wa salah. Hanan wal Qurani ikhwan. Now we are not trying to reflect. And ponder. Allah has given us two, two medicines, effective, two keys by which we can open the door. We can make a way of ourselves. Allah has the Seek support. Don't go to anyone else. Do this first. Allah Azza wa Jalla will, will pave the way to you to go and seek a proper something that actually that you are in need of. But again, but first, استعين, seek support, seek assistance and aid from who? From Allah Azza wa Jalla. Through what? Wudu, wudu, wudu and salah, wudu and salah. Patience and salah. I am patient, but I pray. Can the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whatever happens to him, any surprises, any urgencies, any emergencies, whatever happens to Rasulullah, a bad news, a calamities, a fever, a pain, suffering, hurt, guess what? He will jump. Today we jump to our numbers and phone numbers and friends and colleagues. It's still halal, it's still halal by the way. I'm not saying that is haram. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will jump into what? Into al wudu wa salah. He will bow down. He will prostrate down and ask Allah azza wa jalla because he is the Nabi whom Allah has revealed such verse. So he has to practice it. Oh Allah, oh Allah, I know no one in my life. And you cry. And you say it. And you say it again. Allah azza wa jalla will help you. 
والسعين بالصبر والصلاة وإنها لكبيرة إلا على الخاشعين لك لك الله عز وجل he showed sympathy with us he said it is big things for somebody to think about salah and sabr it is a big thing it is a hard thing but for the humble people it is not إنها لكبيرة وإنها لكبيرة إلا على الخاشعين surely it is a hard thing but for the humble ones no it is affordable it is affordable. So let us, if we want to be from among these people, we can afford things, inshallah. And we strive, we work, and we leave it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Alhamdulillah, Ya Rabbi Alameen. Alhamdulillah, Ya Rabbi Alameen. Wal aqibatu lil muttaqeen. Wala udwana illa ala dhalimin. My brothers and sisters in Islam. As we touch into the quality, the quality of patience, suffering. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us. You don't raise your hand and say, oh Allah, give me suffer. Don't do that. Rather, ask Allah azza wa jalla well-being. Ask Allah health. <coughs> ask Allah wealth. And ask Allah the ability <coughs> to endure calamities. <coughs> You know what sabr is, ya ikhwan? Sabr is, is about actually, is about maintaining and upholding love. Listen to this. Love and loyalty under any, under any circumstances. When a day is for me, what do you do? What do you do? You are thankful to Allah. Today, I'm happy, feeling nice. My family are good. I've got something to eat. I feel secure in my country, in my house. The day is, is bright, the day is good. I feel I'm enjoying my day. Don't be reckless. Don't be reckless. Don't be rude. Don't be arrogant. Be thankful to Allah. The more you bend down in humility, the more Allah will give you more. Allah will elevate the status when you show gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's a day for you. What about when a day is against me? What day? Do I have any option? Akhi, akhi, habib. Be patient. Be patient. For both days are tests from Allah. Life consists of two days. One day for me. Alhamdulillah, give me a hug. I'm, I'm happy. Alhamdulillah. Ashukrulillah. I give. I share. I forgive. I forgive my neighbors. I forgive my enemies. And I give, I give to the orphan, I give to the needy, I contribute, I contribute. This is, this is the practical way of being thankful to Allah Azza wa Jal. And when a day is against me, what will I do? Akhi, be patient for both days are tests for you. Both days are tests for you. The genuine sabr is sabr of Jacob. It is not just merely... Allah Azza wa Jalla will mention فَصَبَّرٌ Listen, فَصَبَّرٌ جَمِيل I need sabr jameel, I don't want any sabr to scratch my face I need to do sabr and complain You do sabr but you complain You do sabr but you tear your clothes You do sabr but you are not satisfied and happy That's not sabr, that's a fake That's rewardless What, what, what sabr are you talking about Imam? I'm talking about sabr jameel what is sabr jameel? Sabr, I swallow it. I swallow it. That's it. I don't complain. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. It's hard. It's hard on me. But I, I don't complain. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. May Allah give me, give me something better than this. May Allah compensate it with something better. That's what sabr jameel. Sabr ja. The Aqub alayhi salam. 40 years. 40 years. They got Yusuf to, to actually be separated from his dad for 40 years. But Alhamdulillah, sabr jameel. Allah returned uh, uh, Yusuf to his dad after 40 years as the prime minister of Egypt. As a big man, as a senior, senior personality in the, in, the, in the Egyptian country at that time. Why? Because of sabr, endurance. Allahu Akbar. Sabr Ikhwani is actually is about enlightening. Lightening your bond, lightening your bond with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for every time you actually you feel, everything you feel pain. Suffering and hurt, which is opposing love, straying away. You don't stray away. You don't lose your way. You don't cry the whole day. Straying away, or actually you lighten, you strengthen your bone of 
companionship, friendship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you actually be patient and endure a calamity, then that's the, op that's the opposite way of straying away from the deen, straying away from the masjid, straying away from suburb. And you actually be, be a victim of isolation. You will harm yourself. I don't th think time will allow me to give you stories, Ikhwan, from within our community because there is a no suburb. People fall into very extreme depression. They kill themselves. Wallah, wallah. They kill themselves. They harm themselves. Depression, anxiety. Why? No suburb, no salah. No suburb, no salah. Allah said you're going to seek assistance, suburb and salah. Otherwise, you're going to come to see yourself. You're going to harm yourself. You're going to go somewhere high and you're going to fall down from that. <laughs> Allah Akbar. A sabr is to keep your head when all the people around you lose theirs. They lose theirs. Now I'm going to keep my head up. That's what sabr is. And Allah Akbar. When you combine sabr with maghfira, Allah has done it. He's told us in Luqman. Wala man sabra. Huh? So you combine patience with forgiveness. That is an, that's a, a sign of strong determination. If you ever, if you ever tempted, tempted to lose your patience with any Muslim, with any, let's say anybody, a Muslim and a non-Muslim, if you ever tempted to lose your sabr with anybody, think of Allah Azza wa Jalla, how, how Allah has been patient with you. Allah is not patient. Oh Allah, Allah Azza wa is being patient with you. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, finally, Iqbali. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who commanded you and me. There is a host of narrations, sahih narrations. Different, different, different versions, different, different words. But the context, or the concept is the same. Be patient. Do you know who is he? Do you know who is the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? He lost his both parents as an infant. Because imagine, imagine someone whom Allah will appoint to be a messenger, a role model of the, of the world. He lost his two, his both parents. While he was, a, his dad even before he was born, his mom after six years of age. And what happened? He buried with his, his own hand, his six children during his life. Are you going to tell me now, uh, I had a problem there? He has a problem. But he delivered, he conveyed the message. It's the best of Allah's creation. Now the question, why Allah will do this to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Because he is the best. Because he is the model. If Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam showed, he shows sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the characteristic, the character, the personality of someone who is extremely patient, then you and me, as the followers of this Nabi, we should follow him. We should follow him. I'm not going to make him the end of the world lose thousand pounds. It's not the end of the world. Allah has already tested me. Allah is testing my wife, Allah is testing my kids, Allah is testing the you neighbor, Allah is, Allah is testing everybody. So it's for you to entertain that calamity with the patience and endurance. Ikhwani, let us be like that. Let us learn this. Let us learn this, inshallah, And Allah Azza wa Jalla will open up the door, the gate of provision. Allah Azza wa Jalla will make us good people. People convey, people convey the truth. People who, when the people they look at them, they, Allah remembered. Today people, they look at us, they don't want to come and shake hands with us. Allahu Akbar. So we are rude, we are arrogant, we are abusive, we are offensive. Don't be like that. Don't be like that. Be, be, be easy going person, be approachable. If somebody will come to you, give me a hug, give him a tie, hug, give him a hug, he says, yeah, Allah, I love you for the sake of Allah. Do you have any problem? I'll share with you a problem. Okay, well, what, what do you think that I can do for you? This is a community. And this is the effects of Salah. And this is the effects the, the effect of assembly. A brotherhood and congregation. What, what, what we are here today? We are salah and khutbah and at the end of the khutbah, you go outside, only the majid, you shake hand with me, you hug me, you smile at me. So I'm really, you relieve my problems. And I share with you, you share with me and we feel, alhamdulillah, like a bond and unit. اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا وتوفنا مع الأبرار وتوفنا مع الأخيار
اللهم اغفر وارحم انت خير الراحمين تجاوز علي يا مولانا انت اكرم الاكرمين اللهم حلينا ب بحلي الايمان وجملنا بقميص الاحسان اللهم واجعلنا يا رب العالمين من الذين كتبت لهم من منك الحسن فهم عن النار مبعدون ومن الجنه قريبون اللهم اهدي ازواجنا واولادنا اللهم حلينا بمكارم الاخلاق اللهم واجعلنا يا رب من العافين عن الناس اللهم ابلغ قلوبنا ايمانا وامنا وسلاما وسلما وابلغ قلوبنا بالحكمه والعلم انك على كل شيء قدير تقبل منا جمعتنا واجعل لنا كتابا واجعل لنا اجرا واجعل لنا توفيقا ونورا يا رب العالمين اللهم لا تخرجنا من هذا البيت الا بدم مغفور وسعي مشكور وجمعه مقبوله انك على كل شيء قدير اللهم اعز الاسلام والمسلمين وانصر المجاهدين وانصر اخواننا الدعاه في سبيل الله الذين هم يقبعون في سواجن في سجون الطواغيت اللهم نسالك يا ربنا ان تخرج اللهم ردهم من اهلهم وذويهم، اللهم بارك في عوائلنا وفي ذواتنا وامهاتنا واولادنا، انك على كل شيء قدير وبالاجابه جدير، واخر دعوانا ان الحمد لله رب العالمين، وقوموا الى صلاتكم، اغفر لي ولكم الله.